Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner. MJ here, and uh, I hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, in this video, I want to show uh, the final uh, update on the cavern project. This has been a four day project, and uh, I have about 30 cavern terrain pieces out of it. So it's been a very very good project for me I'm very excited about it and uh, in this video what I want to show is the texturing paste uh, component the phase where I actually coat all of the tinfoil pieces with a homemade uh, texture paste that actually uses a gesso recipe and gesso is something that artists use uh, when painting it's something that uh, protects the surface area and also primes it for paint so it's very easy to make. And uh, so I use glue, uh, white glue, as you see here, for the paste. And then uh, here you see the cup. I just use about uh, four heaping tablespoons of glue. That was about the, for the first batch, that's what I used. And I use cornstarch and flour in a one-to-one -one ratio. And there's about a cup of it here. Uh, cornstarch is very important it's a thickening agent and it really helps harden and dry things quicker so uh, about two-thirds cup of water and then uh, for the for the texturing agent I use sawdust that's what you see here a fine sawdust and then I use a uh, fine sand and this is a construction sand version that my brother had it's clean sand and I only use the fine stuff and then I mix all that together and then with the blender I slowly add the uh, flour and the cornstarch so that it kind of goops up you know it becomes a paste right now it's very fluid it's very uh, liquidy and so once this paste is done uh, I add some paint some gray paint to it and then I begin to add it to my rocks and especially the softer rocks which are made of that spongy material there and that really hardens them this paste really hardens them and there you can see me applying the paste and it's a lot thicker now because I added more flour and cornstarch like I said about a cup of flour and cornstarch one to one ratio I mix them evenly and that really helps to thicken the paste and it really hardens the, the material when that stuff dries it hardens there are a ton a ton of gesso recipes and I use many different ones depending on what I'm doing or what I'm working with so I coat all of my pieces of terrain all the tin foil ones with this paste and here you see I even use some of the uh, bulk paste with a different color paint I use it on a crash site that I'm building for Stargrave so all of my terrain pieces are coated with this stuff and I let it dry and this is what you're seeing right now so it gives it this kind of pale gray look dusty look I, I really like it so once it dries it dries rock hard it really really protects the terrain and it also uh, if I want to uh, because I do dry brush this with a lighter can and a little bit of white as an extreme highlight and uh, the paste just helps uh, create an area to uh, to paint basically it you know you can dry brush it and all that texture just picks it up quite nicely and uh, yeah that's what you see here it's been already those are the two colors that I use of, of paint for dry brushing you see it's a warm buff it's like a light tan from Apple Barrel and then some white for the highlights so it's really really good I'm, I'm very happy with it so now for the base of the the this setup that I'm doing I add a plastic sheet clear plastic sheet which I then spray with a, a spray varnish that I have uh, I actually have to get some more and this is a quick and easy way to make water you know I don't have to deal with resin or anything like that quick and dirty way of making water and large amounts of water too if I because it's a pretty big sheet and that's one of my favorite pictures you see the boat one of my oathmark boats with a bunch of dark elves on it uh, it's pretty cool I really like this scene 
and there's the boat again and so now I begin to uh, set up the cavern scene again a completely different setup from the prior two videos I can set this up anyway and there are the lizardmen with some clip on terrain that I'm gonna show you how I made in a minute these are like gelatinous mushrooms okay and again there's another view of the boat I really like this view as well it's kind of nice because you see the cavern platforms and then you see the boat down below and the archers up on top you know another view of the cavern terrain and some of the texturing that went on uh, in this terrain so it, it, this is going to be a very interesting set of terrain for I think a wide variety of games and, and subscribers have already given a lot of ideas as to what I could use this terrain for. So definitely leave your comments if you have ideas on a storyline like why are the Dark Elves fighting with the lizard men? You know, what's going on there? We're going to have to work on all that uh, later. And so uh, subscribers have already said, you know, you can use it as a mine, as a, as a planetoid in sci-fi games. You know, and it's true, we can use it in so many different ways. So making the mushrooms and scatter terrain, this was an important part of today's work. And I start with 18 gauge wire and I make a little loop the way you see here. And that's going to become an attachment point. You'll see here, uh, I attach it to a gem. I'm using these gems as mushroom caps. And so uh, there you see me kind of just testing out the wire. And I will coat this wire with glue, hot glue, and then some tin foil. And it makes a nice little stalk. And there you see the, the shape of the stalk. And uh, that gets attached to the gem. And there's the gem. And the gem forms the umbrella of this strange looking mushroom. And uh, what I do then is, uh, once this is done, I stick it to my uh, clothespin because this is going to be clip-on terrain. And there you see it goes right into the little hole in the wire of the clothespin. It's really cool. Then I drill a couple of holes into the clothespin. I also texture it with hot glue because the clothespin is going to be painted a dark brown. That helps camouflage it a little bit. And then I add, uh, just make sure everything is textured. And I begin to add pieces of cork for rock. And I, there you go, there's like a thick cork that I carved up. And then I add other mushrooms. I make other mushrooms and I add them into those holes. And there's the finished piece. I also add some stalks from some uh, lilies plastic lilies that I had and those form the stalks of the the mushroom like the reproductive stalks now for the fungal forest I use cardboard for the umbrellas I make mushrooms many different ways and some tinfoil stalks with wire in them and then I texture one of the caps with hot glue and then I texture the base with hot glue and then for the little ones there I use pistachio cell uh, shells pistachio shells nothing goes to waste and I, I, I'm just testing out where, where it's going to go. Then for a giant spider, I use a pistachio shell. Yeah, pistachio shell for the butt to make a nice uh, big round butt in the back. And I use a spider ring, which I, you know, kind of cut up a little bit. And there's my spider with the pistachio shell. And there's also, uh, I use the pistachio shells to make cocoons. And there's a spider coming out of one. This particular species, uh, when it's born, it's born as an adult from the cocoon. So there it is, coming out of its shell, and there's one guarding up above in a mushroom forest beneath the caves. I add some wire for the fangs of the spider and also for the rear palps of the spider. That's all hot glued in. All that is is a, is a, is a ring that I cut up and, and modify and and add, you know, a pistachio butt. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. A, a lot of fun doing these projects. Then all of that goes to my painting bench. And I start to give it the uh, base coat. In this and for my spider, I use uh, black paint as a base coat. And there it is, all wet and uh, prepared. 
with a base coat and then uh, this is one of the other spiders I made they hang very nicely from the cave stalagmites and this one I, I made with the spider ring and some green stuff you know and that's how I made the spiny butt for this one so I turn these spider rings into all kinds of critters from scorpions to spiders centipedes isopods and uh, I will show that in another, another video. I may have a video where I just show all the different things you can make with just a spider ring. And today I bought more uh, at my local dollar store because they're already stocking for Halloween. And it's only August here in the States. Halloween is uh, the end of October. And already the stores have Halloween stuff. Uh, crazy <laughs> but I couldn't help it and I picked up this necklace of bones for a dollar and I started chopping it up because I'm gonna use all of these bones in various projects including the caves I'm gonna decorate some of the platforms with all those bones and so uh, with the skull I added a little green stuff to modify the chin and the teeth and then uh, you'll see in the next picture I paint it a little bit there it is. I painted the eye sockets and the nose and you can see kind of see the teeth. I'm going to be giving that a wash of ink and then dry brush it. And that's going to go somewhere. It's going to be a giant skull, right? Some kind of extinct creature. And uh, here is the clip-on, the mushroom clip-on, all finished and uh, right in the table with its reproductive stalks coming out. And that was, again, that was the uh, stalks of a lily plastic lily and I cut them off that's what I used uh, but you see I camouflaged that uh, as best I could you know and it don't really notice it um, unless you really look at it close right and then Julie and I couldn't help it and there's Julie getting ready to roll we couldn't help it and we just started playing mock turns on this and just moved the boat a little bit and her crossbowmen are firing at my lizard men that are up on top and uh you know a lot of fun so we can't wait to do a battle report with this cavern terrain and we're going to have so many different ways of setting it up some of which are going to be more complex than others you know they're going to be really it's going to be really good so thanks for watching this update guys and i hope you really enjoyed it um i certainly enjoyed this project and uh we'll talk very soon in the next video i just wanted to show you this project finished up and uh you're probably going to see some more videos on scatter terrain and stuff so have a good one guys